Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are back in War Thunder and it's time to talk about the five year anniversary of War Thunder. Now with all of the wonderful competitions, tournaments and specials going on, it's always nice to highlight them. But if you want to go and see them, just go on the War Thunder website and they will be there for you. Uh, especially with today, you can get yourself the M8 Greyhound and the I-29 which will be one wonderful aircraft and one wonderful armoured car for you to get. But today in this video, I want to talk about the five years of War Thunder and also the next five years. Because even though it is fun and interesting looking at the past, it is much more important from a game point of view to look to the future and see what is going to happen in the next few years. So I have played War Thunder for four and a half years. I was not part of the alpha test, but I came in just afterwards after a short stint in World of Tanks. I didn't think World of Tanks was realistic enough, and also, to be quite honest, at that time I had a very old laptop and I couldn't run World of Tanks very well, and once I booted up War Thunder, it ran a hell of a lot more smoothly from me uh, on ultra low uh, quality. If you go back to some of my early videos, uh, you'll see that they're all in ultra low quality, and that is because I was using that old laptop. Nowadays, I'm much more fortunate to have a nice computer and to appreciate the graphical uh, enhancements that War Thunder has. But anyway, over this five year period, we've seen new nations added, we've seen uh, ground forces added, we've seen uh, the start of uh, naval coming into the game. We have seen Italy, France, Russia, America, over a thousand vehicles in the game in total, and a complete change in the matchmaking. We've seen a complete change in how the research of the game works. We've seen a complete upheaval of how specials are given out and how tournaments happen. And all of these wonderful things are because the game has progressed into newer and newer eras. So, looking at that, you can see the progression from day one that War Thunder has. Now, I have a few friends who I've played the game with for a long time who wish for that old golden age in War Thunder, where there wasn't as many vehicles, it was a little bit more about skill, and generally the research system in itself was seen to be much more fair than it is now. And I can understand their point of view. But from my own point of view, what we have lost in the easier research system in the form of levels and the, uh, I suppose, easier matchmaking, if you want to look at it, that, we have improved in gameplay improvements, we have improved in matchmaking, in my opinion, and we have also improved on the amount of vehicles in the game. So, even though there have been a few darker things in the past in War Thunder, especially one update which nearly made me uh, leave the game, right now, I would actually say War Thunder is in a pretty good place. The game runs well on old systems and new. It is not hard to get 60 FPS out of the game, and if you can't, you can still run it as a competitive advantage. The ping even though the ping can be quite high from area to area. If you compare that to an FPS, or if you compare it to any other uh, game nowadays which is popular, so Dota, Counter-Strike, League of Legends, uh, PUBG, all of these games rely massively on your ping. In War Thunder, it is still a factor but it's less of a factor, meaning that the game is open to more people. And that seems to be a core philosophy that Gaijin have gone for, and that means that you can get a bigger community of all different stars and stripes. And that's what we see in War Thunder. We generally have a general interest in World War II or history or even, you know, modern combats with people pushing for rank 6 and even 7. But we have a common belief in this game and also the military history behind us and where, you know, people want to go. 
And at the same time, it is open to as many people as possible. I don't think there is a game as popular as War Thunder which is as accessible as War Thunder when it comes to connectivity and when it comes to the game running in itself. Maybe uh, Counter-Strike, but Counter-Strike has had some FPS drops over the years because of uh, graphical improvements and also Dota the same. But League of Legends definitely does not run as well as War Thunder and PUBG definitely doesn't either. So when we look at War Thunder, the fact that it's accessible to such a large amount of the population and there's also that interest in military history, it creates a wonderful bundle where I found a lot of interest and I'm sure a lot of you have too. But let's talk about the future of War Thunder. Now, there has been talk from Gaijin that they want at least 5,000 vehicles in the game. To be honest, I don't actually think they're that far off that right now, and probably if they haven't hit it already, they'll hit it pretty soon. So after doing that, what do we focus on? Well, we have the naval beta, which I'm guessing will go into open beta either by the end of the year with update 1.73 coming out, or it will go into open beta at the start of next year. I'm guessing that's what's going to happen, even though the matchmaking system isn't really there yet. World War Mode, which the hype seems to have died down on, and I understand that, because a lot of people don't want it to be another competitive squadron mode, because we already have that in the form of tournaments. We also have the eSports scene, glowing, uh, glowing, growing very steadily in its wake. We also have France coming to the game, and also Italian tanks at some point, and also French tanks, and of course numerous different vehicles which are also going to be added to the game. So you have all of these wonderful things to look forward to. Naval is probably the least I'm interested in. World War Mode is the second, because I personally don't like the squadron base of it, I think it would be much better run by an individual or two individual generals, uh, whether they are AI or employees of Gaijin itself, and then you uh, play around that, I think that would be a better system. But when it comes to new vehicles, when it comes to new maps especially, or just new content in general, which is a lot smaller than these grandiose modes, I think that is going to be some of the most amazing stuff in the game. We have rank 6 being added. Now, personally, I don't really have a lot of interest in rank 6, but it does open the opportunity to other things, and other things such as World War 1. Could World War 1 be a rank 0? Could we have the interwar period as a rank? We kind of already have that with rank 1. But there's no uh, things, nothing stopping them from going more back in history to create that 1918 to about 1922-24 period where we don't really have a lot of aircraft from. That to me is a hell of a lot more interesting than pushing forward in time. But then what do you do with tanks at the time? Well, with France being added to the game, they were very much dominant in that period. Maybe once France is in the game and settled and French tanks come out, then maybe we see them go back in time. Do they go forward in time? Once again, something that I personally don't really uh, care about, just because I always look at the implications of bigger tanks, and what that generally means is bigger aircraft, and those aircraft will just absolutely dominate the tanks. But that's something to consider as well. With naval coming along, you have these PT boats, which in my opinion seem pretty useless in the meta that has been crafted, but will there be a matchmaking system put in to see that destroyers only face destroyers and PT boats only face PT boats? So PT boats being the rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, 4, 5, destroyers, maybe cruisers, maybe frigates, stuff like that. That is also something to think about. 
special vehicles coming in the future. The fact that we're getting the M8 Greyhound and the I-29 shows that special vehicles are still there on the horizon for us to have a look at. Hopefully we do get a normal tree M8 Greyhound though. I think that should be something that's open to all players. Very similar to how we have the M8 Scott and the M8 A1. I think that would be uh, something to go into. But anyway, so we have that. You also have the evolution of the Warbond shop. I still think it needs, uh, it needs tweaking, but what's it going to be like in one or two years? I am especially confident that this game will be here in one to two years. Uh, even three, even five. It has had an extremely successful five years, with now a new engine compared to when it started, with tons of new content, and with a business model that seems to keep them afloat and keep the players happy. And it also has that wonderful advantage where there's nothing really out there which challenges it. World of Tanks, you, I mean, it did have Armored Warfare, I suppose, as a competitor, but that fell by the wayside pretty quickly. There isn't a single game that you can say is like War Thunder. You can say that certain aspects of War Thunder are like other games. So the IL-2 games, the Battle of Stalingrad, a wonderful flight simulator game. That is probably a better version of the simulator mode that you find in War Thunder. But what it doesn't have is a realistic mode an arcade mode, a PvE mode, single missions, a dynamic campaign that you can play as a co-op, which I suppose Battle of Stalingrad kind of does have, but overall, one aspect of War Thunder is taken and defined upon. Whereas you can always come back to War Thunder and play all of the different modes to your leisure. World of Tanks, you could say, is a better arcade game than War Thunder's arcade mode. But you don't have that realistic element in World of Tanks. And even then, what if you want to play aircraft? We have had World of Warplanes 2.0 released. After having a look, I'm not impressed as a War Thunder player. Even if you criticize War Thunder every day, which sometimes I feel like I do, not in videos, but while playing or talking to friends. I still feel like, at the end of the day, there is nothing out there like War Thunder. Even if the community always talks about, you know, well, we want this vehicle, we want this vehicle, how do you change this special, what about this tournament, how do you change that, should we do this, all of this stuff. But everyone agrees that War Thunder is the only game like it out there, and there is no other game they would go to to play like you would in War Thunder. And it's just one of those really interesting things. Now for me, the last four and a half years that I've been playing has been a wonderful experience. I've seen the game grow, I've seen my channel grow, I've uh, got more confidence in speaking, which was the main point of this channel in the first place. I feel incredibly comfortable in front of crowds now, which is uh, really good. But the main thing is I've had fun. I've had a lot of fun playing War Thunder, not just through the battles themselves, but through everyone that I've met. Through my squadron, which uh, I've stayed close with for about four years now. My old squadrons, which I still keep in contact with some of the players. With new squadrons, that I talk to on a regular basis. And from all of you, when you come on the Discord and we have a chat. Now sometimes, I can be grouchy. I can sound pretty ill or sleep deprived, which seems to be the main thing people bring up uh, when they hop on. And I just want to let you know, I'm not sleep deprived, <laughs> I'm not tired or angry or anything, this is just what I sound like. It's just one of those weird things that you're going to have to get used to. But anyway, by the by, talking about uh, War Thunder in 2022. 
My hope is that it's still around for a start, and I think it will be. There are not many games which survive 10 years, but with a concurrent player base of what War Thunder has, and with great content coming out every few months, with new tournaments, with new specials and everything like that, as long as the Gaijin team can keep in a position where they keep producing things, keep making uh, wonderful, interesting things, and don't throw in too many annoying tournaments, <laughs> then I can easily see this game surviving till 2022. Then we have ships. I'm not excited about ships. In 2022, what I'm guessing will happen is we'll have a fully-fledged naval uh, system with light cruisers, cruisers, destroyers, battleships, even aircraft carriers where players can take off from. I think that is a definite thing that's going to happen. Now that every time they add in a destroyer or add in, uh, you know, any of the boats, people always talk about why don't you go bigger? Why don't you put in the Bismarck, the Hood, all of these uh, iconic uh, ships, even Fly's video when he talked about it. He said, where is the Bismarck? Where is the Hood? Why aren't they in this game? And I think eventually War Thunder will get to the point where ships will get to that point. Now, I've made my feelings very clear about this, and I think it's a bad direction to go in, but I'm in the minority, and that's completely fine. When it comes to ground vehicles, what I'd like to see is, you know, the full what we have now. So America, Germany, Russia, Britain, Japan, all of these nations just being completed and left by the wayside. And then a completion of France and Italy as ground vehicle trees. And then a either continental tree or a mixed tree or even an axis tree and an allied tree. And the reason for this is there are only so many prototypes you can throw in the game for each nation before it gets absolutely ridiculous. And therefore you have to expand and keep expanding. This is why we see Italy, we see France in the game, even though they may not have the fullest tech trees. So with that in regard, what I would like to see is a mixed tree of stuff like Sweden, Finland, uh, Australia, Canada, South Africa, Poland, Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, all of these places which did have one or two amazing tanks, but on, not enough to make a whole tree. So you throw them all into the mix and then you just make them either fight on the Axis side or fight on the Allied side. Now if you can make an Axis mixed and an Allied mix, then that solves your problem straight away, and you can just put them on either side. You can also do this for aircraft, but I think it's a bit more limited with aircraft because there weren't as many crazy, uh, weird, interesting designs like there was in ground vehicles from the minor nations, but I still think it's possible. When it comes to World War mode, I would love to see something which is not just... Squadrons versus squadrons. We have areas of the game already dedicated to squadrons, and they are dominated by the good squadrons, and that's completely fine. But throwing in a huge game mode, which is only going to cater to a very small amount of the population, who probably are already focused on other stuff such as these tournaments, and uh, training for them, and maybe eventually becoming professional on the eSports uh, scene if War Thunder ever gets big. It seems like a waste of time. So maybe it would be better to focus on trying to make it appealing for the single player, for the person who maybe doesn't go into squadrons, or if he does, doesn't really talk to his squadron. That seems to be the best way to go forward, in my opinion, when it comes to all of these things. Try and focus on the individual. Now, in War Thunder, that's what I've been talking about for a very long time, and it is a principle in War Thunder and in life that I always try and stick to. The individual is the one that matters. 
you cannot collectively put people together and make decisions based on their collective uh, what collective symmetry. So the idea is you can't uh, make a rule just all for uh, one certain race compared to another. You have to apply to everyone, so therefore every individual is subject to this rule, so there is no discrimination. Now if we apply this to gaming, which may seem a very abstract uh, context, what you have to do is try and make the individual player happy. And that's impossible to do. But, with large uh, game modes, if you want them to be successful, you still have to try. So I hope World War Mode, what happens if, is we have an automated AI system which works out, uh, you know, how to make a compelling uh, RTS which you can drop into and drop in and out at any time with tons of AI milling about, or you have, as I said, two main commanders who have to follow scripts and then they can change it slightly in their favor or change it slightly so it's out of their favor instead of it being controlled by squadrons. That to me is what I would love War Thunder to become. If that became the game, the main game mode tomorrow, some kind of enduring confrontation, but it has a commander calling the shots who is not uh, connected to any of the other players, like, as I said, like a pseudo commander or an AI commander, I think that would be perfect. I would never put the game down, and I would never play anything else. And that's where I want War Thunder to go in the long run, to create something like a more fleshed out uh, system than Battle of Stalingrad but in a War Thunder setting. And I think it's possible, I really do, especially with using the arcade realistic and simulator modes all by themselves. You could create random battles and make random battles not random. You can make them mean something to the individual playing, which is something that would mean they're more engaged and therefore making them push forward and wanting to do well and instead of just focusing on kills, they can focus on the objective, which is always much more fun, in my opinion. But overall, we've had five really good years of a great game. And hopefully, the next five is as good. There's a great foundation. There's great stairs being built on top of it. And now those stairs will hopefully lead to a second floor, which is five years down the line. I'll catch you next time.